Where are the altars? See, if you lose the altar in your life, you'll lose all direction <laughs> in your life. And if you lose all direction in your life, guess what? You're going to lose connection in your life. There's a lot of people that's lost direction and connection. And it's got the wandering in the wilderness. They're doing like the world, acting like the world. You know why? Because they've lost the altar of their life. They've lost the altar of their life. See, this old altar may have an uh, old carpet and a, a black skirt on it. Maybe have a wood foundation and a, and a steel foundation also. But you know what? This is our altar. And this is a precious place, this altar. I don't know about you, but the altar is where I found Jesus. The altar is where I got forgiven of all my sins and washed clean and pure of the blood of God. The altar is a special place. If you lose the altar, you'll lose direction and connection in your life. Next thing you know, you'll be wandering in the wilderness in maybe 40 years, circling the same old mountain, same old habit, same old, so same old everything. And people say, well, what do you call that? I call that insanity. I believe we've got a lot of insane churches in the world today. I believe we've got a lot of insane Christians in the world today. Doing the same old thing, circling the same old mountain, year after year, doing the same old thing, and expecting a different outcome. Watch this. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So today, where are the altars? Turn to your neighbor and say, where are the altars? Yeah, where are the altars? Ask somebody else. Y'all wasn't loud enough. Ask somebody else. Where's the altars? Yeah. Good deal. 2 Kings chapter 16. I got, I got some reading to do, but I got to lay a foundation for you, all right? So give God your ears. 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 7. That's what we're going to read. Verse 7 through 18. Quite a bit of reading, but you'll get it here in a minute. It says, So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiktath Palizer, the king of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and rescue me from the hand of the king of Assyria, Syria, and from the hand of the king of Israel. And what was happening at this time, King Ahaz was in a battle. He's in a war. How many of y'all are in a battle, in a war, in your mind, and at home, or at school, somewhere in your life? But here was the problem. King Ahaz wanted somebody else to fight his, his battle. So many people today want the pastor, the counselor, the institution, the educational program to fight their battles. Watch this. It is between you and God. I'm going to try to help you today. A counselor, a pastor, or a church, or an institution cannot set you free. The only person that can set you free, somebody help me preach today, is the blood of Jesus Christ. He'll set you free. He sure will. He'll set you free. So you got a pastor in front of him who believes in the altar. Because the altar means altercations. That means something's going to be altered in your life to make you a better person in this time. Most people don't want to be altered. Most people want their way or the highway. Most of America have pride problems. Most of America, they believe Burger King. You can have it your way. You might as well have a little Burger King hat on top of your head and just walk around saying, I've got it my way. And they lied to y'all. You can't have it your way if you're a child of God because you've got to go to the altar to be altered so the flesh would die. You've got to sacrifice something so God can stand you up in his spirit. In his spirit. So watch this. Where we're at. It says, come up here and rescue me from the hand of the king of Assyria and from Syrians and to the hand of Israel who are attacking me. Ahaz, listen, also took... The silver, the gold that was, the, listen to this, was found in the house of the Lord. The money. He took God's money. And look what he did. In the treasure of the king's house and sent a present. He took God's offering and took it out of the offering plate. And took, he stole money from the treasure of the house and went and gave it as a present, as a gift to a crook. So he would win his battles. For him. Kurt, this is going to get hot in here today. He sent it as a present to the king of Assyria. And to the king of Assyria listened to him. In other words, he just didn't go send him a letter and send him a present. He went and visited him. Watch this. And the king of Assyria marched up against Damascus and took it. He won the battle for him. He paid this dude off to win his battle. Carrying his people captive to Kerr. And he killed Razin. When King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Oh, here we go. Tiglath-Pileser, 
king of Assyria, he saw, listen to this, he saw what? The altar. Listen to this, very important to get this in your spirit. He saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz said to Uriah, the priest, he said, I want you to model this for me. I want you to build me this altar. Here's the pattern. Exact to its measurements. Exact to its details. And Uriah, the priest, built an altar in accordance to the king Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Uriah, the priest, made it before King Ahaz arrived from Damascus. Listen to this. And when the king came from Damascus, the king viewed the altar. And the king drew near to the altar, went up on it, and burned his burnt offerings and his grain offerings and poured his drink offerings through the blood of the peace offerings to the altar. Boy, that sounds good. He made an offering. That's what most church people would say. Well, just come to church, put your tithes in, put your time, your attendance in, and everything will be good. But I'm going to show you something. Because, see, listen, the devil can show up on a Sunday morning and he can raise his hands. The devil can show up on a Sunday morning and quote more scripture than all of us in here together. The devil can go to vacation Bible school and WMU and ABCs and 123s and Kellogg. He can do all that. The devil can do that. That's why you've got to be very careful who you're worshiping at the altar. Watch me. Very important you get this word. He said he built him an altar. Let's go down here to verse 13. And he done all these things. Verse 14. And the bronze altar was before the Lord. Look, watch this. He what? He removed. Look what he done. He removed from the front of the house of worship. He walked into the church. He took God's altar out, and he put a pagan altar in. Good word today. He done all the sacrifices on a pagan altar, and this, that, and the other. Verse 17, and King Ahaz cut off the frames of the stands and removed the basin from them, and he took down from the sea of all the bronze oxen and under it and put it on stone pedestals. Verse 18, last verse, let this get in your spirit. And the covered way for the Sabbath that he built inside the church, the tabernacle, the house, he put it on the outer entrance for the king caused him to go around. Everybody say he went around the house. Yeah, he went around the house of the Lord. Everybody say he went around the house of the Lord. Because, look at this, because of king, the king of Assyria. Now watch me. King Ahaz had a problem. He was getting ready to go into a battle. He didn't want to fight the battle in his own flesh, in his own spirit. So would he want somebody else to, buy, to, to battle his stuff? If you'll go to a counselor, if you'll do this, if you'll pay them, if you'll go to the preacher, he'll help set you free. But here's what happened. He looked at the king's altar of Assyria, and he said, I want that altar right there. That's got to be the reason why things are happening. He's the king, and he's winning the battles. But watch this. That altar was big, it was beautiful, it was flashy, it had the worldly garm on it, it had everything on it, but the problem was this, y'all listen to me, it was a worldly altar. It was a pagan altar. It was not of God. That's why the church must open its eyes and realize just because somebody comes to church don't mean they're a Christian. When you open them doors up, y'all watch me, this is a scary statement, but it's a true statement. When we open our doors up to help the world, you watch this, sometimes the devil walks in. He does. And it shocks Christians. You know why? Because we're not looking through our spiritual eyes. And the reason why all this happened was this. He wanted a big, bad, beautiful, better he wanted a, a big old altar, but the problem was this. Y'all watch me. What he did, he made the worst mistake of his life. He walked into the church. He picked up the altar that had been there for 270 years, Tommy. He picked that altar up. He walked outside the tabernacle. He set God, the altar, outside, and then he grabbed a pagan altar and picked it up and walked inside the church and went up there and set the pagan altar inside the church. He removed God to put his way in the church. He removed the presence of God. He removed the anointing of God. He removed the sacrifices of God to have his way. 
I'm telling you what's happening in churches today is they have removed the altar. They have removed, this is a hard word, and I'm going to get probably nine of your toes. But they have removed the altar. They've had, they want it their way. If they don't get it their way, they say, well, I'm not going. We are living in the most fickle generation I have ever seen in my life. If they don't get the way, here's what they do. Y'all ready? Y'all hang on your toes. They pack up, they move out, and they start a church two miles from their church. That is not a church. You're going to get your feelings hurt. I don't get my way. But here's what I know. I've went to the altar. I've laid down my flesh. And God rised up in me. And now I'm not about me. It's all about Him. And when you've got Him in you, He'll get His way. Amen? Amen. He'll get His way. And so many churches today, they've removed the godly altar. And they have put a pagan altar. You say, Brian, you shouldn't talk about it like that. That hurts my feelings. Watch this. I believe God's coming back. I believe any moment. Right now, the Bible says he comes back like a thief in the night. I'm talking right now, the universal horn could blow. And if that horn blows, the only thing's probably going to be in your chair is two things. Either you or a pile of clothes. And I believe that I'm saved and born again. I believe it's time that parents get back to the altar that daddies get back to the altar where the old blood's at where God's at where he's come on y'all help me this morning where the presence of Jehovah's at that's what we got to get back to that's what we got to get back to when people get mad here's what I tell them you ain't been the altar makes them mad they come to me and fuss and bicker and give me a 10 point list why God's not doing this and they're depressed they're on hands out of presence they're on Prozac and here's what I tell you, you've not been to the altar. There's no way, watch me, if you are mad, you've not been to the altar. There's no way, Barry, that you can go to the altar, meet Jesus Christ at the altar, Him strip you of your flesh, your ideas, His Spirit come in you, and you get up mad. There is no way possible, there's no way possible you can go to the altar and get up angry. There's no way possible you can go to the anger and get up and gossip about people. There's no way. The problem with the church, I'm trying to help you. You say, I don't like preaching like this. There's a good church right down the road that preaches a fluff gospel. There's a good old church down there. Y'all can live the way you want to live, act the way you want to act, talk the way you want to talk, and everything will be all right. And boy, I hope I see you in heaven. That's not my Jesus. My Jesus is still holy. My Jesus is still God. He's Lord. He's Savior. He's Master. He's Maker. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's my God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Somebody praise Him in the house today. He's God. He's still on the throne. He's still on the throne. You can't move Him. You can't shake him. You say, boy, I want to believe like that. You are. You can. But you've got to quit reading the Bible like a fairy tale. You've got to start reading the Bible as a reality. And put your name in those pages. And I'm telling you today what the churches need is a good old altar call. We need the post of this church, church is shaking. You say, what do you call that? I call that Jesus. That's what we need. See, the Bible says, the Bible says that the tabernacle, the church altar, was removed and replaced with a pagan altar. Now, I don't know about you, but I still mess up. I don't know about you, but you got a pastor in front of you, I still sin. I've not arrived. My flesh every once in a while wants to rise up. That's why I need an altar in my life that I can be altered. But I'm telling you today what we need is a good old altar back in the church. I guess if I had to tell you about a slow fade, here's how Christianity is. Y'all ready? Here's a slow fade from King Ahaz. Here's what first started happening. First thing he did, he wrote a letter. Will you help me? Think about this. Here's a slow fade. Will you help me? I need help. 
The second thing he did to get away from God, he just didn't send him a letter. You know what he did? Everybody say what? He started giving him money. He stole money from the church. I want y'all to listen to me. It's going to really upset Baptist. But watch this. When you steal money from God's temple, you're in trouble. It's not your money. I have people say all the time, I had a woman, Sonsky and Truth, at my last church, she wrote a $60,000 check to go into our building program. $60,000. And here's what she said, Donna. You can have this money if you only spend it on this. You know what I told her? Keep your money. Keep your money. People write their tithe check with also attachments. Lord, here's my tithe, but Lord, I want to see this happen. Lord, I'm giving to you, but I want to see this happen. Y'all keep your money. Because it's God's money. This is his house. This is his temple. This is his tabernacle. And you shouldn't have attachments on money. I give my tithe because it's a requirement. It's an obligation. It's a blessing. I want to give to God. All he asked for was 10. Well, I'll just keep my 10. And if I give 10, I'll just tell God what he does with his own money. This King Ahaz got in the offering plate at the church, stole the money, and went and paid off a, 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 a old pagan. He gave holy money to an ungodly man. My God. My God. So if I had a word to speak over you today, listen to this. Hold on, let me go into this. After he gave him the money, he started visiting the king. Y'all with me? Say amen. After he visited him, you know what he done? He started thinking, listen to me, very important. He started thinking like the Assyrians started thinking. You know what he did? He, he got the blueprints to his life, and he said, you know what? That's working for him. I wonder how I'm missing preach good. This works for him, so I'm going to make it part of my life. Watch this. I tried to be T.D. Jakes. He's black and I'm white. I tried to be Jensen Franklin. I'm not Franklin. I'm Rafferty. I tried to be Dr. Steve Ayers. Guess what? There's only one goober like Steve Ayers. Nobody, God has never cloned another man like Steve Ayers. I, now, here's what I found out. I got to quit trying to be somebody else and be who God made me to be. And when I start walking who God made me to be, God can use me. But God can't use a fake imitation. That's a good word. God can't use somebody who's trying to be somebody else. God wants to use you. God wants to use Elkhorn. We're like no other church. Thank God. Yes, we're contemporary. Yes, we get a little loud. Yes, we clap. But guess what? We're the mighty, mighty Elkhorn Baptist Church. We're not going to back down, back off, shut up. We're who God made us to be. So good. Boy, there's freedom in that too. There's freedom in that. Nobody can play the keyboard like Glenn. Nobody can play the keyboard like, like Dina. Y'all play differently, but guess what? You got your own sound. You got your own sound. But if you try to be Stevie Wonder, I can see Glenn doing that. There's only one Stevie Wonder. There's only one Brent, Jess, Bobby Gino. There's only one, thank God. That's it, guys. Listen to me. And the last thing was this. The last thing King Ahaz picked up, very, very, bad, very good you get this, okay? He completely joined the enemy's camp. He sent him a letter. Watch this. Then he sent him some money. Then he started making his life look like another man. Then he started acting like that other man. And the last thing, he joined the enemy's camp. Boy, that's a, that's a word today. So many people, they start just wanting to get involved in a bad situation. They start acting like that person, wanting to be that person. And next thing you know, they join that person. They get the blueprints of that person's life in them. And the next thing you know, they join the enemy's camp. That's exactly, Bobby, what happens to church people. We try to be a church that God did not design us to be. We try to pattern our, our Elkhorn Bab Baptist stuff you know, to a First Baptist. We're not a First Baptist church. I don't wear a suit. I don't like a suit. There's nothing wrong with it, but it chokes me. I don't like it. It's not me. 
So when I show up at the KBC, guess what I got on? Right here. And they look at me and they sit there and go, where's your suit at, Pastor? And I'm like, it's in the closet, Reverend. I'm not, I am not your son-in-law. I am not Haywood Reiner. I am not Dixie Reiner. I'm not Bobby Gino. I'm Brian. That's what you get. Quit trying to be something you're not. Because the next thing you know, you'll join their camp. You'll start thinking like the enemy. And you'll be like them. I want to be like Jesus. I want to think like my God. Act like my God. I want to speak like my God. Oh, hallelujah. It's what I want. It's what I want. If I had a word to speak over you today, don't replace God's altar for a godless altar. Don't replace God's altar for a godless altar. Listen to this. I know I'm not the richest person in the world. Really, I am. I got Jesus. And I know I may drive a 1999 Ford F-150. But I wouldn't trade. I told Steve, I wouldn't trade my pastor with another man. I wouldn't trade what God is doing in this church for another church. I wouldn't trade anything. I wouldn't trade my gift, my present of the Holy Ghost that lies and lays in me for anything in this world. I've got something in me that outlasts everything. I've got something in me that when I'm down, it'll pick me up. When I don't feel good, it'll say, rise up. When I'm down to nothing, he'll bring me up to something, amen. Y'all praise him in the house. Let's just take a praise break right there and thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come on. We're going to pray. That's a praise break. We're going to praise him. Woo! Yeah! Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. I got something in me I wouldn't trade for the world. You can have the biggest church you want. You can, you can have the nicest vehicles you want. You can have the mansion on the hillside. And I know one day that's all going to burn. But baby, what I got in me. It's going to last forever. You say, Brian, do you really believe that? If I didn't, I quit today. I believe in him that much. Because he's pulled me out of stuff, Judy. When death was knocking at my door, uh, God just gave this to me. When fear comes knocking at your door, let Jesus answer. When the enemy comes knocking at your door, let Jesus answer the door. It's good. Y'all may not get that till later good when in when people are making fun of you and rumors is at your at your door knocking saying you're a nobody let god answer your door he'll tell he'll tell them what you are and then they'll have to go through the blood before they get to you so listen whatever you're dealing with and it's knocking at your door right now let jesus answer the door Woo! preach that white boy <laughs> good it's good here's i want to show you something if you don't live close to the altar, I wrote this down, you'll stop living. Young people, listen to me. I don't want you to wait till you're 42 like me and start feeling something in your life. I want you to grab it while you're young, while you're listening, while, man, things are fresh in your life, that y'all can change your school system, you can change your home life, you can change the situation, the circumstances you're in now. You don't have to wait till you become an old man. You don't have to do it. Do it now. And let me show you how you do it. At the altar. At the altar. When you don't even want to go to the altar, you need to go to the altar. People all the time, well, I was talking to a woman at a church I'd done in revival. and it ended up lasting 11 days. 36 people got saved during that revival. And uh, after it was over with this woman, she's 80-some years old. She came up to me and said, Preacher, she said, I know you give a lot of altar calls. And I said, yes, ma'am. That's how bad we are. And she looked at me and she said, well, I, I don't know about that. I said, no, you're bad too. You've outgrown some stuff, but you're bad. And here's what she told me after I finally we got on the same page. She said, I've been going to this church for 50 years. And she said, we've not had one altar call. Not one, Keith. And see, we, we call that odd. But I'm telling you, I've been places where the preacher preaches and he just walks down the aisle and there's no invitation. I'm telling you why we got two or three or four or five or six. Or I'll stop right now and say, God, just show up. 
Because I know at the altar is where you'll find Jesus. I know at the altar is where you'll find the precious presence of God, where the blood is just flowing out of the altar and over our life. That's where you'll find Jesus. Listen to this. I want to give you this last thing, and I'm done. If you don't live close to the altar, you'll dry up. Listen to me. You'll dry up. You won't feel that old tug. How many of y'all been in them services before, boy, your heart starts beating? And all of a sudden, you just feel like the Holy Spirit just went back there and grabbed you by the shirt and said, follow me, boy or girl. How many of you have felt that old tug of that Holy Ghost in your life? That's what I'm talking about. If you don't live close to an altar, I'm telling you, you'll dry up and you won't feel the tug of the Holy Spirit. You'll go through the motions. Y'all watch me. You'll go through the motions. You'll have no zeal. You'll have no passion. You'll have no fervor. You'll have no fire. You'll have a fake smile. And you'll even walk in and have a fake handshake. Watch this. How you know? I've done it. People walk up to you. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that church, everybody feels good? Nobody's sick. Nobody's going through a problem. Everybody's just fine. They'll shake your hand, put a, a fake smile on. Everything's good, but you'll never see them at the altar. You'll never see them at the altar. And so I have to ask, where's your altar in your life? Watch this, 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 18. Y'all highlight this verse. Underline it. 2 Kings 16, 18. Here's what it says. Y'all ready to say amen? And the covered way, everybody say covered way. The covered way is Jesus. It's his blood. Y'all mark this down because this will speak to you. The covered way means I am covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And he had built inside the house. The Bible says that in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, 8 through 18, it says, I am the temple of the Most High. In other words, the Holy Spirit lives inside my what? My heart, my temple. He lives in me. Watch this. You got to get this. Watch what happens here. He says these words. He built on the inside of the house. And the outer entrance for the king, he, had, he caused them to go around the house of the Lord because of the king of Assyria. And what God dropped in my spirit, and I want you to get this. I am the temple. The Holy Spirit lives in me. And I am covered under the blood. I'm going to say it again. I am the temple. Everybody say, I am the temple. The Holy Spirit lives in me. And I am covered under the blood. That should set you free in this house right now. That should set you free in this house right now. I am the temple of the Most High God. The Holy Spirit dwells in me. And I am covered under the blood. That means when the enemy comes at you, he's got to go through the blood. He's got to get through the house of the Holy Ghost and before he gets into the temple. He can't do it. He can't. We got Christians that seem like they go under, they go, they go out and they turn over rocks looking for, the, for a bad spirit. They go over and they say, well, I wonder if the devil's under this rock. I'm telling you, Christians welcome more of evil in their life than they realize. If I realize who I was and who was in me and what I was under, it don't matter, no devil in hell can't separate the love of God in me. Ain't no devil bigger than my God. Are you kidding me? I don't sit there and think about it, wondering where the devil's at. Boy, I feel bad today. No, here's what I say. Even if I feel bad, here's what I do. God, thank you for touching me. Thank you I'm getting up, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you that you made me like you. And Lord, if it's sickness is in you, it's in me. But if no sickness is in you, it's not in me. First John chapter 4, we'll check me out. Say, here's what I tell God all the time. God, Listen, if you're sick, I'm sick. So I put it back on the blood. And even when I don't want to get up, guess what I do, Brother Tom? I get up. Sometimes you've got to push yourself. You've got to push yourself. But here's what happened. Listen to me. Verse 18, King Ahaz changed the only entrance to the king's altar. 
Everything looked the same, coach. I want y'all to listen to me because I'm going to preach hard on this. Listen to me. Help me preach, Holy Spirit. I stopped by this morning to tell you there's only one entrance. There's only one way. There's only one God. There's only one Lord. There's only one Savior. If you want to get to the Father, you got to go through the Son. Muhammad can't save you. Buddha can't save you. Church can't save you. But my God, His blood can cover you and save you from the top of your head to the bottom of the soles of your feet. My God, my Lord, my Savior is all we need. I'm telling you right now, listen to me. Praise team, y'all come. I'm telling you right now, Jesus Christ is your answer. He's the answer to your marriage. Y'all help me. He's the answer to your kids' problems. He is the answer to Elkhorn Baptist Church. He is the answer for everything. And that's what you get from this preacher. The reason why the world is lost and dying and going to hell, you want me to tell you? Church ain't doing its deal. We're sitting back and we're just, you know what? I love you, but I hope you don't go to hell. But you'll never ask anybody, do they know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? Because you know why? Here's what I've heard this in this church. Here's what people say. Why are you asking me that? Well, I don't want you to go to hell. Well, you offended me. You should know I'm a Christian. I'm asking you right now, do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? The Spirit will testify to the Spirit. But we think we're going to offend somebody by asking them, do they know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I would much rather offend you and you go to heaven than you love me and like me and be popular and die and go to hell. The church is not doing its job. You know why? Now we got Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> now she's saying you can go get be a good person. There's many gods. There's many entrances. I know I'm I am messing y'all up. I watch her every day. Watch her. I don't care. But she is not God. Now we got preachers on television said, if you'll send me $19.99, I'll send you holy water. You dump that holy water on your head and you will get up or your arm will grow out or your big toe will not be infected. I had people call me. They'll say, Brian, should I buy that? I'm like, who in the... Or am I talking to? You kidding me? We got the... We got the answer in front of us. He is the living water, not just holy water. He is my God, my friend, my Savior, my Alpha and my Omega, the beginning and the end, and everything in between. He's my God. That's precious not about holy water it's about the holy god you want your marriages to work get to the altar he said boy that fires you up because i am tired of people calling me and saying brian it's not working i'm like i hadn't seen you at church for months i hadn't seen you at church for months now watch me church won't fix you but church won't hurt you either Watch me. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Mark me down. Forsake not the assemblies of God. See, there's power in here. We got a young man over there from Nigeria. Tonight, at 6 30, we're going to baptize him over there. From Nigeria. His family's here. They won't be here long. They'll be going back to Nigeria. But what I love about you guys, you're the heartbeat of Nigeria. You're God's men and God's women that has the holy call of God upon your life. And I pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that God gives you souls in Nigeria. Oh, I feel the Lord on that. We love you. God bless you. Get somebody to heaven in Nigeria.
Yeah. So here's the deal. I'm going to read a scary verse, Donna. Aaron, put it up. This verse brought me to my knees this week. Actually, this verse is going to mess you up. I'm talking about King Ahaz. He sold out. He became part of the enemy's camp. He started acting like the blueprints of somebody else. And I want to show you the final call of King Ahaz. Y'all ready for this? And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God. Oh my God. And cut in pieces the vessel. He went in, Donna, grabbed the altar and took it outside and started cutting it in pieces. It ain't no good. That old Holy Ghost conviction don't work no more. I'll have it my way. I'll do it my way. It's just the way it is. It don't, God don't work. That's what he said. Look. Of the house of God, he cut it in pieces. The vessels, the vessels, the vessels, my God. And he shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. My God, Beth, I want this to get in your spirit like never before. Now I want a fire to get in your bones. Because listen to me. Let me put it in modern day language. Y'all ready? He took the Bible and he said, That old God, he says, Be faithful. Huh? I'll be faithful and I want to be faithful. He ripped it out, cut it in pieces, and threw it. Tongues. Tongues. Well, that's for Pentecostal. It ain't for me. Tear it out. Do it. Tithe. You can go ahead and tithe, but I'm going to take your money, and I'm going to give it to whoever I want to give it to. Tithing don't work. And he ripped it out, Donna. He tore it up into pieces. He said, God, it's my way. This is my house, and I'm going to do it my way. He took that word, threw it. I'm telling you today, that's why it bothers me when people say, oh, tongues is for them. Well, tear it out of your Bible. Tear it out. Peter walking on water, ah, uh, it really wasn't water. Well, tear it out of your Bible. Go on, tear it out of your Bible. But I'm telling you today, under the unction of Jesus Christ, from Genesis to Revelation, from in the beginning to the last day, man. <laughs> It's all inspired. It's all inherent. It's the Word of God. And when it worked for yesterday, it'll work for today. And we're going to stand on the Word. Woo! The Word of God. The Word of God will stand when everything else falls away. It's about the Word. It's about the Word. It's about the Word. So if you don't like it in your Bible, you know what you've done? You've done exactly what King Ahaz did tore it up. And here's what really bothered me. The Bible says he shut the door of the house of God. You know what that means? The spirit wasn't in the house. Donna, how many churches do you know today? Let's be honest. They don't want the spirit of God in the house. They don't want the spirit of God in the house. Oh, they say they do. And then the spirit shows up and all of a sudden they start questioning what God is doing. You know why God don't show up? They took the altar out and they locked and shut out His presence. Boy, that's a good word. Holly, they took the altar out and they shut out His presence. I deal with it every day. People will be in my office and I'll say, you need Jesus. No, not today. Not today, Brother Brian. Shut it. God's wanting to bless you and your children, your marriages. No, nah, she's got to straighten up. God's talking to you. Quit shutting the door. Because actually, if we keep, if we don't go to the altar, and if we keep shutting the presence of the Lord out, the church will dry up. That's right. Well, that's a good prophetic word here today. Right. How many of y'all received the word today? Come on. How many of y'all received this word today? We cannot stop the altar and we must not ever shut the presence of God out because if you do, you might as well have a hat on. And say, man, I'm going to have it my way. I'm going to do it my way. 
And here's what I told the first service. Y'all ready? It's going to mess y'all up. I'm going to say this as best I can. If everybody would tithe and obey God, we would not have to borrow no money to build a church. We've had close to 600 people here today. 600. And I bet you, if I was a betting man, only 10 to 12 percent tithe. I bet you. Well, I shouldn't say that I'm preaching. So here's the deal. Y'all ready? The altar's open. If you're living in sin, the altar will change you. I won't. I can't. I tried. I quit. It don't work. But I'm telling you, if you want God, if you want a hot, steaming, rocking marriage, where you need to go? Altar! Altar! If you want your children to come back to the senses, where you need to go? Altar! That's where we're at. And if you don't obey God, guess what you're doing? Shutting the door. You're shutting the door. And I'm telling you today, God wants more of you. If you would, stand to your feet. Come on. The Holy Spirit wants to save somebody here today. Don't shut the door. The Holy Spirit wants to set marriages free. Watch this. Don't shut the door. Keep pleading the blood of God over them. Amen. So today, where's the altar? Where's the altar in your life? This altar's open. Come find God. Come on, church.